Hi, I'm Jocelyn again, and I'm here with Nicole Stromberg, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk to her about her wonderful book and the other great work that she has started doing in her life. How are you today? I'm good. Good. I'm good. Great. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. We're super psyched to have you. Um, just in talking a little bit, I'm already excited to <laughs> hear some more stories about you. So, um, First of all, just tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Like, are you from Woodford County or? I am, I am born and raised here. I'm still here in Versailles. I have two sons uh, and a husband and they are going to school here and my husband also works here in Versailles. So we are rooted in You are rooted in Woodford County. Yes, yes, Woodford County, it's 100%. County. Yes. And um, do you work at all? I do, I'm a hairdresser normally. Uh, and I'm also this new artist, this found author, right. and I am. I work a couple days a week doing hair. And so you still I, do do hair? Yeah, I still do hair. Do mm -hmm. you do that at a salon here? I do a salon in Lexington. Mm -hmm. oh. It's called Studio A. Studio A, right. awesome. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. So um, do you find it hard to balance your new artistry work with I do. your other artistry work? I do, <laughs> I do. I find it difficult because the days that I want to write, I can't write because I have to be in the shop. And the days that I don't want to write, I'm, I'm, I'm home. And so it's like, okay, you have this time and you're not writing. You're like, and I have no block. I have nothing going on in the head. Yeah. Right. Nothing so um, tell us a little bit about your book. So right. this is called Alexandria's Life. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's, what. tell us what it is. Alexandria's Life is a women's work devotional workbook. It's a year-long devotional. So it's 52 weeks. Each week is one, considered one entry. And what that means is you have your scripture, your commentary of some transparency of my life, experience of something that's happened, and um, I show you how scripture has helped me and how I've, I guess, gotten a quiet time with God and how I've gotten closer to having a closer relationship with Him. So there's five days worth of questions, and of course we have seven days in the week, so, so you pick the days. Right, yeah, exactly, so days. you don't feel weird, because a normal devotional... Um, just to show the difference, not that one's better than the other, but right. a normal one is daily usually, right? Yes. And daily you have a scripture and you have questions and, and stuff that, and you write all of that down. Well, right? daily normally is just they give you the scripture and they may give you a little bit of the commentary, but you don't have questions. Or if you do have questions, it may just be one, like a point right. to ponder, something to think about. Right. Whereas this, my book has five and you actually have homework you have to do. It usually takes anywhere from, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how deep you want to get or how much time you have. Now, did you do that so that that would probably be good for somebody like me who's going to read it real quick and probably get not very much out of it? Exactly. Because I was reading a devotional. That was one of my uh, resolutions one year, mm -hmm. to read a devotional book every single day. Right. And one day I read one and I was like, oh, this is great stuff. And I closed the book and I thought, now what did you read? And I couldn't tell you, not even the title of it. Right. So it opened back up and tried again, and I couldn't tell you the title or the first sentence in that you know particular devotional. So I decided that if I could do something to help me, maybe write something down or write it down, because you know the best way of learning for me is to write it down and kind of sticks a little more. Right. Uh, so then this came about. So yeah. And and how's it been doing so far? How it's good. Um, it's not the bestseller like I had envisioned in my head the very first week it came out. Because it's getting there. It's, it's going to get getting there. It's got to it get is. time. To it get has the, to have time. Yeah. But How this, long has it been out? Uh, December 12th will be a year. So this coming December will be a year for it. So we're going to get it like just booming for you for the absolutely. one year anniversary. You are. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> writing was something that you probably not thought you would do one day as a hobby or life, correct? Not in life. I did like to write as um, a child, as a, as a young woman. I always kept my own journals. Uh, I did have outlandish thoughts then. Never knew why my outlandish. thoughts were as far out as they were. No one knew. It was just something that, you know, I kept to myself. Um, I was introduced to writing uh, from a therapist, actually. Uh, I had some traumatic um, event happen to me when I was graduated from high school. I was robbed at gunpoint. Oh, wow. Uh, I worked at one of the local restaurants in Versailles, and I was the one that actually... Um, did the composite on the, the the guy that came in to rob us so we were able to catch him from my composite from beauty school um, mm -hmm. we were learning about face shapes and everything like that right, then right. so that's what was I was able to catch him and the therapist I don't know who it is but I often think about them he he told me to write he said whatever you do whatever your feelings are just write and from there I had just been writing um, my mother passed away seven years ago I wrote every step of the way of her writing 
never to think that something would come out of this writing, and it did. And it did. And well, it that's did. amazing. Mm -hmm. And writing wasn't always easy for you no. because you have dyslexia, which a lot, I know a few of my friends' children have it and mm -hmm. they struggle with it. So at, did you find that was hard in writing your book or did you, how did you kind of, what would you tell some of my friends' daughters who thought I could never write a book because, or you know what I mean, mm -hmm. facing that mm -hmm. challenge? Well, one thing it did for me was because it was so early on and so long ago, it was never diagnosed as dyslexia. Right. Dyslexia is the word that is now in the modern days. Right. <laughs> but back when I was in school and it was the second grade that it was found, um, I actually did second grade twice. So second grade was a very crucial point for me because I went to a Catholic school and that's where they found it. It was less students in the um, so classroom. You got, you got lucky. So I had I some individual attention. Mm -hmm. And when my parents were brought in for a parent conference, it was Nicole is having some reading and comprehension problems. So they diagnosed that in the school system right. as having comprehension problems, reading and comprehension problems. So that's what it was actually called. It wasn't until years later that we found out and how I became dyslexic is because my father's dyslexic. Right, it's so very hereditary. It, it yes, because one of my best friends is, and mm -hmm. unfortunately she went to school a long time ago. Yeah. It was never corrected, never helped, you never. know, so she still has a lot of, um, Self -esteem, you know, self-esteem mm -hmm. issues. She doesn't want to write things in front of people and she doesn't want to, you know, she doesn't like to text a lot and stuff right. because she flips things and whatever. So that's why I was asking, mm -hmm. did, did you feel like you faced hard times writing the book or did you, did, because you found out at an early age, had you learned how to like work around it or? I think the most important thing for me was I had parents that said, you will not use this as an excuse. That's um, awesome. You are a smart person. You are someone that is worthy. We just have to look at it differently. We have to work things differently for you. And that's amazing and because it it's it's kind of, in my opinion, with any learning disability or disability at all, mm -hmm. that's how it should be viewed. Right. It doesn't make you, yes, you're different, but we're all different. Right. So it doesn't make you less smart than this person or less able than this person. You just have a different way yeah. that you will do it. Right. I used person. to go home and tell mom, I would say, mom, it took me 30, you know, 30 minutes, and it only took them five minutes to do it. It took me 30 minutes. And she was like, okay, so what else were you going to do in that 30 minutes? What did they do? And I was like, they had to wait on me. She said, okay. <laughs> so you were busy and they weren't. Right. You know, she would always make it make positive. It positive. And my father would reinforce it. I mean, he, he was a, he's a very smart businessman, and, you know, we're all gifted in different areas, and reading and writing weren't our thing or comprehending it, but he's so strong in math. You know, I wasn't strong in math by any means, um, but my thing was sports. I was great at, you know, running track. And so you played a lot so of sports. So I played sports. a lot of sports. My parents put me in another position to build up my confidence because right. I didn't think I was able to do anything because of what they said. You know, because well, they said that I can't do this because I have a learning disability or I have a reading disability. And that's But when I would start winning, you know, track races and meets and different things like that, that showed me that I was worth it. You know, I am somebody. I am I'm not like you and you're not like me. Right. Um but what it showed me is that I still have some type of gift that will help me be successful in my life. And that's awesome because that probably did that help also like you want to inspire other women with this devotional book is that kind of you get yeah. from your own experiences absolutely and just other people that are around you yeah and the main thing about this is to let people know that I am an overcomer yeah. I am an overcomer of dyslexia do I still put my six before my five yes do I still write my IE different or EI whatever way it goes yes I still do that do I still make words like wound and wound do I call them out for the same word absolutely um, my children get on me all the time for seeing saw I don't know which is goes which I don't know if I seen it first or saw it first it doesn't matter but they always mom you have to see it before you saw it or you right. you have to yeah. it's got to be like, seen you know, you know what I mean you know what I mean you know, uh -huh. you know what I'm trying to say right. you know what I'm trying to say right so uh, the thing about being dyslexic is it is a disability but it's not something that I let hurt or hinder me in any way. Right, and that's what I, you know, we really want to showcase. It's just that we're showcasing, and no matter, you can always be whatever you want to be as long as you believe it yeah. and live it. Yes. You know, I mean, yes. it doesn't. Excuses are just that. Yes. I mean, that's basically what it is. I agree. So, 
So this is um, this was your way of becoming more spiritual in your life. Yes. And helping other women that may or may not be spiritual or want to be more spiritual yes. to give them that chance yep. to kind of do that as well. And so we were talking earlier, and a lot of people might say, well, then this is a religious book. Yes. And would you consider this a religious book? It is not a religious book. It is a faith-based book, yes. It is a book that teaches people about spirituality and not religious or religion. Religion is man-made in a sense, mm -hmm. and spiritual is something that's inside of you. Can't anybody take it away? Can any, no one can can um, grow that thing but you and 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 the the faith that you have. So I look at religion as a Sunday morning experience, and I look at spirituality as an everyday, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right, experience. and this is to help that. Yes. And, and, and I think there's a lot of us that strive for that. And like you said, want, um, you know, with what I went through, a lot of people say, well, God has a plan for you. And, you're, mm -hmm. and, and I do struggle with that. I right. struggle with what could that possibly be with something mm -hmm. like that happening. Mm -hmm. So, you know, somebody like going through that, I would definitely want to look at your book and read, you know what I mean? Just to, so that I can, um, because church doesn't do it for me. Not that I'm not, I'm not talking down about Absolutely church. I'm just not. saying like I go there and I feel it that yes. day. I feel it that moment. Right. And I feel it while I'm there. Yes. But then I leave and I may feel it throughout half of the day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then Monday comes and I don't feel it anymore. You know what I mean? Right. That joy and that, that feeling that brings tears to your eyes, it's gone. Right. Once you've left, you know, the, right. the people around the church or the church or whatever. Exactly. So that this is to kind of help keep that feeling, I guess, all week? Yes. Keep you within that relationship, that communing back and forth with um, with God. And kind of help. Um, I was reading on your website that she has a website. If you all want to, do you want to tell everybody what your website is? It is. It's, oh, what is my website? Alightministries.com. That's what it is. Alightministries.com. And that tells more about her story. And yes. um, it also, if you want her to come speak, she does those. Do. She, does, she does talks of any kind that you want to book her for. But um, where was I going with that? Well, and no. on my website, if you don't care, no. on my website, it does share my story. And it also has a way of contacting me through my email, which is alexandriaslight27 at gmail.com. And it shares beautiful stories of how you've touched people's lives. I yes. read some of those. Yes. One of them was a converted atheist. Yes. That's pretty amazing. So yes. I think people should definitely check it out. Because yes. whenever I talk with somebody, of course, I stalk them first. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking into you, and your story was just really um, inspiring to me, you know, just to hear all those things. I love, I just love hearing anybody that didn't let, something stopped them. Yeah. You know, that's what I, that's what I, why I like doing the arts and entertainment. I want to show young women, old women, any kind of woman. Mm -hmm. I mean, how old were you, if you don't mind me asking, how old were you when you decided to write this book? Uh, I was 40. So it was like so a you, crucial point in my life. I'm just saying, so there's, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's 30, there's women my age, I've thought about doing certain things that are like, well, I'm almost 40 now. I can't do it. It's too exactly. late. Exactly. And that's what I love about, you know, doing this part of my of the magazine is mm -hmm. that you were 40. Yes. And you wrote a book. Yeah. And yeah. it's going to do great. And mm -hmm. you may get to write another one and another one and another one. And that started, you know, at a prime part in your life, which most people think it's over the hill and you're going downhill from there. But I don't agree at all. I don't agree. I'm with you. I don't yeah, agree. I don't agree at all. I think this is the starting point yeah. of a new chapter in your life. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Where can we buy this great book? Amazon.com. And it's Alexandria's Light, which is a devotional mm -hmm. workbook. And she has a journal, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. And that just tells you, like, you can write your own thoughts and your own feelings. Right. And it doesn't even, I don't think, have to be on the scripture, right? This would just be your just journal of anything you're going through in your anything. life. Anything yeah. that's worth putting on that paper. Yeah, and that's good because, like, you said, therapist, they told my daughter to do the same thing. Just write. Just write. Anything you're feeling, it's good to mm -hmm. get it out. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty smart. Well, it was really, really nice talking to you. Yeah. I really can't wait. I'm going to check it out. I can't wait to look into it and see. And I'll probably order my copy. Awesome. awesome. So um, I am Jocelyn, and I am inspired. I am Nicole, and I'm an overcomer.